Hello. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Kyriakos. I am from Greece. I live in Germany and uh, I work in Digital Werkstatt in uh, Switzerland, in Basel. Uh, I have been working um, with Blender and professional 3D printing for about four years now. And I'm here to share with you my experience and to, to give you an idea of the materials that uh, can be printed at the moment. And uh, while I was preparing this conference, I gathered a lot of uh, new information um, that uh, helped me expand my knowledge. And uh, my goal through this workshop is to make you feel the same way. Uh, to start, I will uh, show you a table of some of the materials that can be printed at the moment. But I will focus on the materials that are being used most of the time. And you have to think also that it's not only what we can print, uh, but also how we can treat the material um, after the print. I will start with the most uh, popular category, and this is uh, selective laser sintering, or SLS. Um, this is working with a fine, very fine powder that bond and the laser that uh, bonds and melts um, the area that you have designed your model, and is creating layers of about uh, 0 0.12 millimeters. And after a layer is finished, a new layer spreads on top, and the process is repeated until uh, the model is ready. The most known materials of this category, first of all, is uh, polyamide. That the uh, poly natural occurring polyamides are uh, wool and silk, which are nothing but uh, proteins. And uh, wo so while most common artificial uh, manufactured polyamide is uh, nylon, it's very good for functional prototypes. It has very good chemical resistance and uh, is good for medical prints like uh, prosthesis. Uh, next material is alumite. is a material is a mix of uh, polyamide PA with uh, aluminum dust. Has a grey color and metallic appearance. is uh, suitable for parts that need machining and uh, is good for automotive and uh, for models, for example, like wind uh, te tunnel test. And next material is uh, glass filled polyamide. It's polyamide powder mixed with fiberglass. Uh, for uh, models that need a uh, much higher thermal, uh, thermal resistance and parts that require stiffness. Uh, next material is uh, TPU is a thermoplastic polyurethane. It's very strong and it's flexible. It's something like this here. And the best example that uh, I can give you is that um, the new, suit, the new uh, modified shoes from Adidas, they will print with this uh, material. Uh, next material and one of the top of this category is uh, car carbon mite. It's a polyamide. Oh, sorry. It's a polyamide mixed with uh, carbon um, carbon fibers and it is uh, very good for um, light and strong is a very light and strong material and it can replace metal and it is uh, good for aer aerodynamic components in uh, motorsport applications now we'll show you some projects that we make with some of this material uh, here you see a pump printed in one object without moving uh, moving parts. Um, you can see a very good level of details. Uh, here you see a machine that is uh, three meters long on the left uh, that we cut it in pieces to fit inside the printer. And um, on the left side you see a very nice level of details with polyamide. Uh, now this is alumid. This is a scan model. It was uh, about one meter seventy that we scan, and uh, this is in a scale of one to ten, and it has very really nice good details. Uh, this is uh, combining alumide and polyamide. Uh, the pink object is the, the polyamide that uh, we painted after the uh, the print. Some problems that could occur. 
uh, is that uh, you have to avoid flat surfaces because of the heat that is being produced inside the printer. Uh, you can have some small deformations, like a wrapping effect. And uh, you have to avoid long objects with diameter of less than three to four millimeters because the object will not be uh, will not be straight. Now moving to the next category is direct metal laser sintering or DMLS is working almost like SLS, but the difference is that the, the material that they are using is uh, metal powders. First material is uh, steel that has a uh, good machining and uh, weld characteristics. It has good mechanical properties and parts that require post-production -pro post processing. Uh, next material is uh, aluminum. Uh, it's a low weight with uh, good thermal properties. Um, you can make uh, thin walls, complex geometries, and it's suitable for aerospace and automotive products. One of the top materials of this uh, category is uh, titanium. Um, that is characterized by having an excellent uh, mechanical properties and corrosion resistance. Uh, it's combining with low specific weight and uh, biocompatibility. Uh, this material is suitable for many high performance engineering and of course for um, biomedical implants. Uh, an example, this is a tool uh, that we print from steel and the small cylinders that you see in the middle is uh, the weld, uh, weld together after the print. Some problems that uh, could occur is uh, shrinkage. That means that uh, because of the heat that is being produced inside the printer, uh, your model maybe will be smaller from what you have designed. So you have to always keep in mind uh, next is that you have to avoid overhangs. Again, for the same reason, they will lose the form. And you have to avoid angles less than 35 degrees because you will have a bad surface. Next category is uh, stereolithography. SLA is using an uh, ultra-wide curable photopolymer liquid uh, that is spread on a platform. Uh, the machine is using a UV laser that uh, draw lines where your design is. The liquid is becoming hard and the process is repeated. Also, support structure will uh, generate uh, where, uh, where it needs. Some of the materials is uh, TUSC XE 2700T. is a transparent uh, material that is uh, good for strong water resistant prototypes. And uh, the specifications are like uh, ABS material. Next is uh, Protogen is a white colored uh, photopolymer. The specification again here are like ABS. It is very strong material with uh, highly accurate parts. Uh, and also sharp edges can be made with this uh, material. Next is a poly 1500, combined stiffness and toughness. The specification of this material like uh, polypropylene. Uh, it is tough and flexible and uh, has a variety of applications like automotive, medical uh, products, and electronic. And the last material is uh, Extreme that has uh, good all-around properties. And is good for uh, replacing mechanical parts like uh, parts that are uh, for CNC machines. And it has an excellent uh, surface quality. Some problems that could occur with this technology is that uh, you have to avoid solid objects. Um, because sometimes the, uh, removing the uh, support structure can be very, very difficult and also the machine mm, will not work uh, without a minimum wall thickness. And uh, you have to avoid direct sunlight because after one point you will have a small deformation uh, on your product and it will be something like this. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the new model and this is after, uh, I think, almost uh, two years but has this yellow color. Uh, next category is polyjet. Now, polyjet technology jets and instantly UV cures uh, tiny droplets of uh, liquid photopolymer. Uh, the layers that are created here are almost 0 0.016 millimeters. is really high quality. And in case of overhangs, the printer uh, will generate uh, support structure. It is possible to print and combine uh, more color and more hardnesses. For example, if you see this, here is uh, printed in one object and uh, has different kind of hardnesses. 
and different kind of colors, black and white in this model. And also you can give uh, a color to your model, but uh, the color that you can give is, uh, you can choose from a color palette. You can't give a color from a texture, for example. The palette is looking something like this. Um, first material is uh, very white, is a white design um, with a great mechanical properties. It is good for medical products, small objects, and with complex features and a variety of uh, industrial applications. And also the Vero, the Vero products, the Vero family, can be found in more than 400 um, colors. Next material is Vero Clear. It is a semi-transparent material that is good for medical products, uh, eyewear, and uh, artistic and uh, exhibition modeling. Next, we have Tango Black. Uh, is um, a, a rubber-like design. It is flexible and it can be found in different kind of uh, harnesses. This is a model that uh, was printed with this technology and it has uh, 10 different colors. Now, some problems that uh, could occur with this technology is that uh, in case of more colors, the, designs can, the design can be very difficult uh, because for each color that you need, you have to make a separate file with zero tolerance between the two objects, between the two colors. And this can be very, very difficult sometimes and in case of the model that you have. Uh, it can create big size files uh, because of uh, the very fine resolution that we have uh, with this technology. Uh, that means that you need more geometry and uh, you need more, this can cause very big size files that sometimes you can't upload to a company's website. I think it's about 100 megabytes per website almost. Um, next category is uh, binder genting, that is uh, an inject uh, printhead moves across a bed of powder and selectively depositing a liquid of uh, binding material. A thin layer of powder is spread across, is spread across the completed section and the process is repeated. Uh, here we have color composite. It is a very fine powder uh, mixed uh, from ceramic and gips. Is good for architectural uh, models and fast color prototypes, but also for models that uh, they will uh, they will use for preparation of a surgery. We have ceramics. Uh, is a food safe material uh, with uh, heat resistance from almost uh, 600 grads. Now some examples. Uh, this is a molecular. Um, before removing the powder. The support structure that you see under the model is uh, for me to help me uh, to remove it from the, this step and take it to the next step that is removing the powder. And uh, here is the final model in uh, full dimensions. Now, before some months, we had the opportunity to scan the first uh, World Cup, the FIFA World Cup. And here you see the model in blend file, and here you see the printed object that I have it here in a scale of uh, one to two, almost. But it has very nice level of details. Uh, here is uh, a spine that uh, we printed. It was uh, is this one to one scale, and uh, that we print for some doctors. And here, is, here you see the same object in one uh, some other angles. It was very complicated, this model, to remove from the printer, but okay, <laughs> we make it. Um, the problems that uh, could occur with this technology is that uh, the colors won't be the same like you have in your design. Uh, I really don't know why this is happening, but I haven't found until now the, the reason why. It's fragile comparing with other technologies. And uh, in case of a complex model, the powder of uh, the depowdering can be very difficult, and uh, the remaining powder will be there uh, like white spots. And this is because after the model is infiltrated with the super uh, glue, uh, the white the powder that it didn't remove properly, it will stuck on your model, and you will see like white uh, color. Next category that is most popular almost is uh, the fused deposition modeling or fused uh, filament fabrication. Uh, the word of uh, FDM belong to Stratasys, so is a commercial word for FDM. Then 
word that the uh, reprap is using is the FFF. Uh, the printer heats the filament until a semi-liquid state. Uh, then the nozzle extrudes material according to the design and layer by layer the model is being done. Also the table has to be also warmed up. Now one material is ABS, is a thermoplastic polymer and the most important uh, mechanical properties are uh, impact resistance and um, toughness. It is uh, good for fully functional prototypes. The next material is uh, polycarbonate. Is, uh, polycarbonates are a group of thermoplastic polymer containing uh, chemical in co containing carbonate in the chemical structures and is uh, suitable for aerospace, medical and many other applications. One of the top uh, material of this category is Ultem. Uh, is a thermoplastic that is a very, very strong and uh, lightweight material. And the most important is the heat resistance that is about 153 degrees. And the best example that I can give you is that uh, the new airplane from Airbus is using up to 1,000 printed parts. And most of them are uh, Ultem. Some problems that uh, could occur with this technology, uh, the support material can be very difficult to remove or really, really painful sometimes. And uh, the, uh, you have visible layers depending from the resolution that you want to print your model. So, and sometimes you can see small gaps between the layers. Uh, the last category is the lost wax casting. Uh, how this works is uh, first your model is being printed in a wax printer and after your model is covered from um, a plaster mold that uh, after the mo mold is dried the wax material is melted and like this we have our mold that uh, the molten metal will uh, insert. After the metal is uh, dry uh, we break the model we break the mold and like this we have uh, our, um, our model. Now not a lot of things to say about these materials. Um, we have gold, silver, bronze, platinum, brass and they can be found in different kinds of finishing and in different colors. Some examples is uh, here is a cross that is designed for my gold child. It's uh, gold uh, red. 14 uh, carats of uh, material and here is another project of mine that um, was the material is a silver antique. Some problems that uh, could occur with this technology is that nested objects uh, can't be printed. Uh, that means that if you have a chain or movable objects uh, can't be made with this uh, technology. Uh, you have to avoid sharp edges because after polishing the model uh, you will have some issues and also you have to avoid uh, group, uh, group objects. This is in almost every category because you can't print group objects. Now I will go to the second part of my presentation and this is uh, Blender and uh, how I am using Blender for some of my projects. I assume that everybody knows how to design a model in Blender, so I will focus on some of the functions, some of the basic functions of Blender for creating 3D printable objects. The most known function and the most known problem of Blender is the Blender unit. Uh, you have to always think for printing is one Blender unit is uh, one millimeter. And uh, to show you an example of this is here I have changed uh, the um, units of my model to metric and uh, I wanted uh, my model to be 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters in this case. And when I export my model and import to the program that I'm using for uh, color 3D print, I have 0 0.2 of uh, something. I don't know from where this is coming, but it's like this. And if I leave everything default, I don't change everything and I treat my units like one millimeter, I have exactly what I want. So this is 20 millimeters and this is what I want. Now, OBJ. Okay, I didn't know this. Good, thank you. <laughs> um, now, next important feature is the changing the dimensions. 
uh, when you change the dimension, it's very, very important that uh, you have to apply the scale of the model. This is very important because it will affect the modifier that you will use. It will affect the UV unwrap in case that you have, and it will affect maybe the export of your model. Now, uh, to make this is not something special, you have to be in object mode by, by pressing Control A. You can uh, reset or apply the scale of your model. Uh, very, uh, when you want um, to print a model, it has to be watertight. Now, in case that you haven't uh, designed your model to be uh, printable from the beginning, it's a very good to modify that it will save you time. And a lot of time it will save you money because some printers, they are calculating the price with the object of the model and some printers from the material that they will use to print your model. Now again, the most important feature of this before you apply, the solidify is to apply the scale because here you see an effect that uh, if I don't apply the scale, I have this. And after applying the scale is uh, the dimension that I want or almost the dimension that I want because Blender is telling you that you have to make one step more and you have to activate also the even thickness and the high quality and um, if I don't activate the even uh, thickness, I have a number of 1.41 millimeter, although I said that I want 2 millimeter. And after activating, I have the model that I want with the dimension that I want. So always keep in mind to activate this option. Uh, another way to give uh, volume, to give thickness to your model is by copying and scaling to the normal direction. Uh, this is sometimes is a little bit difficult uh, in case of the geometry that you have, but it could be very practical uh, because it will give you more freedom. Um, this is a little bit easy to make. You have to copy your model in edit mode and pre uh, press Alt S to scale it to the normal direction, but also you have to keep in mind to always on the bottom of the screen because you will have very, very in more important information, like uh, even thickness, is, it, will be, it will be very, very helpful. Now, uh, with this option, uh, a gap has been created and now uh, I will show you how to fill uh, this uh, gap. It's very important for a printable model that it will be free from uh, gaps and free from uh, holes, from errors and uh, you have some several options to fill these uh, kind of errors. First of all is the, um, is the bridge tool. Uh, you have three options to, um, to find this way, to find this tool. First of all is by activating the loop cuts uh, add-on from the pre user preference. Second is the, by using the quick tool add-on from uh, Jonathan Williamson that is an amazing add-on that it will help you and it will save you a lot, a lot of time. And uh, the third option is by uh, um, inserting the, um, by, uh, the edge uh, preference. Uh, another way to fill holes is uh, by, um, with the fill option. Uh, this is uh, this will create a triangulate face between your object in case that you have caps or in case that you will have a hole to your object. Uh, this also can be found in two ways or by pressing uh, Alt F or by going to the face properties and choosing the fill um, the fill option. This will not affect 100% uh, the um, will not affect 100% the printable model in case, of course, of uh, how big your model is. Next option is the grid fill. Uh, this will create uh, a very nice surface to your object and in case, let's say, that you have a sphere, it will follow the form that you have. Uh, but the only problem is uh, that sometimes it will not work because it will say that you have to choose uh, two edge loops. And in case that uh, you have this problem, you have to close the hole manually or by pressing Alt F or by pressing F by other uh, ways. Now, another option to give enough um, and uh, you can have very, very nice effects. And here you see a model that uh, we create uh, is a lamp uh, made with Blender, of course, and on the left side you see um, the printable object, the prototype that we made with, uh, with Ultimaker. 
I will not analyze more this uh, modifier because it's mostly for artistic uh, modeling. Now, when you are filling holes and when you are filling uh, gaps, it's very important that um, you will see the normal direction of your model. This will create uh, some problems uh, in the printable object, and the printer will not understand that you have an error. And it's always good uh, to check the normal direction and uh, to see if everything is working correct. Now, the, um, here is a problem from inverted normals. This is supposed to be a figure that uh, we I took this file from a customer. And uh, I didn't check if uh, this uh, model has problems. And I just put it inside the printer. And I was very happy to see this after. I didn't know what exactly what was the problem until I opened the blend file and I saw that all the um, normals were inverted, were inverted. So always check for problems when you are taking files from other people. I have it also here, this Hollywood thing. Um, next uh, important modifier is the Boolean modifier that uh, it has saved me a lot of time um, when I want to make some operations and um, you can make union, you can make difference, you can make intersect uh, but the most uh, common re frequent reason that I'm using uh, the Boolean modifier is the, to, to fit my model inside the printer. Now to make this, um, um, it depends from the printer that you have, of course, because you have different kinds of dimensions in a printer. Uh, to make this, uh, you have to create uh, a, a plane that is bigger from your object and uh, place it to the, uh, to the position that you would like to cut uh, your model. Then copy your model, place it to another uh, layer is very important, this. Uh, choose uh, assign a, mo a boolean modifier with uh, intersect or uh, different, it doesn't matter which one will go first. And uh, then with a the copied model, uh, assign the, uh, opposite, uh, the opposite operation that you choose from the other one. Again, you have to uh, copy your model and save it to another layer so you will have always a backup. Now some examples of uh, this uh, this Boolean uh, operation is uh, here you see an architectural model uh, that in reality is uh, 450 millimeters and uh, I had it to print it in uh, color 3D print and uh, the dimension of the color 3D print is uh, 380 millimeters so I had it to cut the model in two pieces and I also here created some unions uh, to, be, to be more stable and here is the um, printed object with full color material. Now, um, another example. Uh, this is a figure that we scan, um, and we wanted to print uh, this uh, with polyamide. It had it to be, uh, unfortunately, in two pieces, because the maximum size of polyamide is 700 millimeters. So the, this figure is a uh, one to two scale, and we had it to cut the, uh, the model in the middle. I also created some uh, unions to be more stable. And here you see the printed object. Yeah. Some of the printed objects. Now, the um, one other example is uh, this topography. Uh, the is one meter, 50 centimeter long. And uh, I had to cut uh, this model in uh, six pieces to fit inside the color 3D print. And uh, the material that you see in the middle is a uh, stereolithography technology, and it was printed in uh, transparent material in one piece. Um, now I will show you an example of a Boolean operation and how you can use the to polyjet technology. Uh, here uh, I have this uh, molecular that I had it to print it, uh, with polygen, and like I told you, for its color, you need a separate file. So for the red, yellow, blue was not s such a big problem because I had it only to make them separate and close the holes that were created. But the problem was the molecular in the middle, the spheres. 
and the, these fields were overlapping each other and to create a, a separate file from each uh, this of, of these spheres and with zero tolerance I had to create a boolean uh, to assign a boolean modifier with most of the time difference and my main object was uh, the gray color that you see and uh, after the boolean modifier each sphere was looking something like this it was a little bit uh, complicated to make um, another important issue that you will have uh, with color 3D print mostly and um, a way to give a solution to this problem is that when you are taking when we are scanning a file sometimes we are taking geometry a lot of geometry and unwanted geometry although here in my blend file you don't see any kind of errors when I printed my object I had uh, this black spot on my printable object and I didn't know from where was this coming now if you go to wireframe uh, and make a zoom in you will see in geometry that is not attached to somewhere and uh, of course uh, no text were captured from this technology and that means from, uh, from, from the scan so that means that the printer gave a black color and uh, that it was printed together now um, to fix this problem you have the linked and invert option and to, to make this you have to choose a face from your printable object press L to, l to make link all the objects that you would uh, from the printable object and then by pressing control I to invert the selection you will select these errors and then by deleting the object you will be free from this kind of uh, errors now the um, one of the most important modifiers of course is a subdivision modifier what is making is giving a lot of geometry to your, uh, to, your to your model make it, it smoother and uh, but the problem is that it can create uh, unwanted geometry and sometimes and in case of uh, the material that you want to print is unnecessary to subdivide so much time your model now to give you an example of this uh, subself modifier again with the same molecular here is the model that I used for the binder printer is uh, you can see um, the polygons uh, that very clear and uh, although in, the, in this case the polygons are uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 millimeter and it, but it was smooth enough for the binder printer and here you see the polyjet printer uh, that uh, that needs much high geometry and uh, in this case here you see that the um, one polygon is 0 0.0 uh, 5 to 0 0.1 millimeter edge length is a very accurate this technology but what is the rea the reality is that with binder printer I have 70 almost 70,000 vertices and the 6.6 .6 megabyte of size and with polyjet I have almost 6 million vertices and the size of 564 megabytes that uh, if you want to print this from in the to upload in a company's website it will be very very difficult and uh, the reality is um, this binder jetting you see that it is a very smooth although I had less geometry although in the spheres I could go one level more of uh, subserve and uh, here is the polyjet printer very high level of details <coughs> now some tips for color 3d print um, you have uh, three options to give uh, color you have the texture color you have uh, the material color and uh, you have the vertex color now like everybody knows with uh, texture color you have to UV unwrap your model it doesn't matter how but it matter to be to look nice and uh, attach a model uh, um, a material to your model that uh, has this texture the texture can be photo or can be um, a texture that you created with uh, texture paint and uh, here you see a model that uh, has uh, six textures attached to this um, model uh, next is uh, material color is very easy you just give a material to your um, model you choose a color that you would like to have and also you can have more materials attached to, se to separate uh, polygons <coughs> now
Now the vertex color is uh, you are have more creative. Al also with more geometry, you can have more colors. And um, you have to go to vertex paint, of course, to paint uh, the vertices. And here is an example. Uh, my model is is blue, and inside you can find uh, some orange, gray, and uh, yellow spheres, the molecular. And uh, now we go to the topology of the model. Uh, you have to avoid holes because some printers will create some errors. Uh, you have to avoid inverted normals because of the example that I saw you before. You have to avoid duplicate uh, the geometry. This is very, very important because sometimes the printer will not understand the error and will print and you will have some uh, strange effects. And most important is that you have to avoid uh, negons. Uh, because after you export your model, it will be um, translated to triangulate phase, and this can cause some strange faces that maybe is unwanted. Now, if you have uh, quads or triangles, it doesn't really matter because it will be uh, triangulate after the export. Now, you have to always use the 3D printing tool. It is very useful. You can have some. You can find uh, a lot of errors. But uh, you have to think also that in case that you are working with um, a big size files with uh, millions of vertices, if you press the check all uh, control, it will take forever until Blender crash. And um, what I'm using most of the time is the solid object, the solid option that uh, I want to know if I have holes or inverted normals. That this is the most important that I need. Now, if I have overhangs, it doesn't really matter because the printer will generate uh, the um, support structure alone. Now, some things before you export uh, the model. You have to make a backup. It's very, very important. Uh, save your model with all the modifiers, so you always know that you have uh, a safety file. Uh, apply the modifiers to see if the effect that uh, you want is exactly this. Uh, triangulate the face to avoid nigons. Make a final review of, your, of the model. See if everything is working correct. Now, uh, export your model. And after exporting the model, import it again to see if everything is correct. That means that uh, maybe you forgot to apply the scale. Maybe you wanted to export with texture UVs, but you export with vertex color. So you always have to import to be sure that everything is uh, working, in, working like you wanted. Now, to export your model, you have uh, with Blender four possibilities. Is STL, that is the most common one. Then you have VRML2, OBJ, and you have the PLY. The three last one is uh, the, um, with the uh, color informations. Now, to, to print STL, to export like STL, you have to choose the model that you want. It's very important. And uh, by giving a name and exporting, you will have the file that you want. But if you don't choose the model, you will have one kilobyte file with nothing inside. So it's very, very important to choose the model that you want to export. Uh, the next is VRML2. That is the best format to export the model with color information. Uh, you have to activate always the selection only object uh, option. So you will export only the object that you want it to be exported. And uh, also, you have to. It depends from the co from the way that you have given color to your model. You have to activate texture UVs or vert vertex color for material or for vertex paint. The problem with uh, VRML2 is that you can export only one texture. This is the only problem. Here you see the. I have three textures attached to this sphere, and when I import it to the Color 3D Print program, I have only one texture attached. And unfortunately, there is. The only way to export your model with multiple textures is by exporting by with uh, OBJ. Uh, but also, this will create some other problems because you have to have a program that will translate this OBJ format to a ZPR format. And uh, not everybody has this, uh, pro this translation program, unfortunately, and it's not an open source program. Uh, you have to activate also these uh, options for the OBJ format. Now, in conclusion, I will not uh, repeat the same things that uh, I already told you, but um, I will show you a workflow that I'm trying to follow when uh, I, I design a model to, to print. And um, first of all is the customer idea. 
Uh, in this step, you have to take as much information as you can. Uh, if it is possible to know the budget of uh, the, the object, it would be very, very useful for you. You have to know the time scale, uh, how much time you need to print the object, how much time you need to design, and also you have to have extra days for the production. That means that uh, sometimes the printer can stop working, and that means that uh, you have to postpone the production time, and so you have to have always uh, extra time. You have to think also so the size of the model that you want to print because this um, will give you some details of the final printed object and also how many details you can give to this object. Now, of course, is the material and the technology that you will print. The <coughs> um, and after these four steps take place, uh, your design takes place and also you will know the, how many level of details you can give to your model. Next step is um, make a final meeting with uh, your uh, customer, uh, give some details, take a feedback uh, to avoid some problems. And if everything is going good, you have a production time and uh, everyone is happy. So thank you very much for your time. Hope was everything good. In case that someone has questions, I'm here. I don't understand exactly um, the question. Which piece making the multi-jets? Yeah. And they're saying that they're avoiding the fragility yeah. of the printer by curing it during printing. Okay. Um, I don't know something for HP, is the truth? Uh, I have been working with uh, Stratasys, and uh, you have some. It's, it's very stable, is the truth? I haven't seen any kind of uh, problems with this material, but everything is dependent from your design. So I really don't know which kind of errors can be. Uh, but for example, Stratasys uh, uh, PolyJet use support structures. Yeah. And MultiJet, because it's a part of this printing technology, do they need support structures? Don't need. No. Oh, okay. I don't know this. Uh, Okay. But they don't need to have samples. They don't have. Uh, they, just, they haven't shown the machine, so nobody quite knows how to. Okay. Uh, you have a uh, different kind of uh, post-processing. Uh, it depends uh, from what you want to make. I have heard a lot of people that make with acetone, but you can create a very nice surface. Uh, you can make different kind of things. You can place it in an oven to be a little bit more smoother, but yeah. From my experience, I haven't used this format. I normally use for 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 color 3D print uh, VRML2 because it's taking all the information, and also I have the possibility to import direct to the printer. Because some of the formats, like OBJ, you have to have another program that it will export your model to a ZPR format and it port it to the printer. So with this uh, format, I don't know. I haven't uh, used. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. You export in this format and separately the, the texture and you then skip the object file. Okay. We'll use it to, to test it. That would be useful. Yeah.